Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you? Welcome to the class. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class, everybody.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. We are going to start tonight. And tomorrow is Friday, right? So that is very good. Okay, so the first thing that we always check is about the, the platform. So this is it. So this is the one for today. And uh, this is the question for today. Also remember that we need to do the 2.5 homework. So just, you just need to go and select what would be the, the option. And there's a second part when you need to choose the correct option for this, okay? Good, good. So we're going to check the attendance before we move on. Okay. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Hello, there was a problem with the internet, but I'm back in business. So let's continue with the check-in. I was with Gloria Elizabeth Linares. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodriguez. Rosa Elena. Teacher. Ah, okay. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, present. Good evening. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Good evening, present teacher. Good evening. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jan Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura Lopez García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Good evening, present. Perfect, thank you. Okay, we are going to start then with the class of today. So let's see. So we are going to analyze the three, well, three PL service vocabulary. Uh, this is kind of easy. By any chance, do you know what is three PL? It's when the it's when the company. Um, Needs the needs an outsourced service uh, in logistic. Very good, very well. Yeah. So, thank you, Rose. As you can see here, it says what is three PL, and the answer is below third party logistics. So that's why it's three PL is a supply chain model that involves three parties. So three three parts are involved. That's why it's called 3PL. So we have first the business. So this is us, our company, right? So you produce any kind of products, services, anything that you may want. 
But then we have logistics provider, sometimes known as 3PL or 3PL provider. So there are like common services like distribution, the way that they are going to transport things, logistics in general, but as Rose said, is a third party, is an outsourcing company. It's not part of our company. It's other company that comes and help us. Do you remember like the one that we saw that it was with simulation and then they uh, fix some things in the process, create machinery so they can distribute and provide the logistics. So this is, that is actually a logistic provider. So that is the second party on this one. And the last one is the carrier. So the carrier can be part of the logistic provider or can be another company. In this case, in the model of 3PL is a different company. So you have the business that is the main one, the one that produces the goods and or services. The logistic providers that are the one that analyze, create the procedures, uh, the processes, the tasks, uh, the manuals, the flows, everything. And the carrier that is going to be the last part that is like I'm taking the product and I'm taking it to somebody else's. So that is it. Any questions on this? No questions. Let's see if it's true. Uh -huh. Nelson. What is a 3PL? Where in the Einstein, in the 2PL is in the in the 3PL, the logic. Uh, when, when did you see the, the business and the, and the promotion and the transport and the place and, and the provider? I think it is 3PL. Okay, perfect. Sandra, what is 3PL? Our provider logistics and share the transportation carrier. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's kind of simple, right? Sometimes uh, these letters of these things are like, uh, no worries, tell me. So are like, um, you say the, the name and sometimes we believe that is something that is very strange and complicated, but it's not. 3PL means that there is um, a third party company, an outsourcing company that is going to take care of logistics and another one that takes care of the distribution, the final part of the distribution. That is it. It's kind of simple. Of course, there is more. So we have sometimes 3PL and 4PL. So what is the difference between those? Anybody? In your own words or what do you believe is it? It's a different, it's a 3PL, it's a for, for par, partes, for partes, for decirlo así, a 4PN is a globally. Okay. For me. Globally is a very good thing. Yeah, it's like larger, right? It's for large company. Very good. Any other opinion? Is for PL more is uh, more technology? It might be with more technology. Yeah, it's possible since they are larger. They need different systems, different kinds of let's say um, processes. I, I have a, I have a, I have a more merchandise. Yeah, have more merchandise. That is so true. Good. 
Okay, uh, there is like a, a comparison. Go ahead, yeah, I, wa I was reading about the 4PL and I read that the, the 3PL is the logistic. Only uh, the warehouse, the transportation, and the, the delivery of the products. And the 4PLs is more than is. It, it's, it's all uh, the the optimizing, optimizing the supply chain of the company. Very good. So that's why it's called 4PL because there is one more, one piece of uh, the system that is coming. In this case, it's like uh, more focused on the supply chain. So as you can see there, actually, it says 3PL versus 4PL. So for the 3PL, oftentimes they own the warehousing or transportation assets. So it's not always, but very, very often that they are going to be the owners of the warehouse and at least the transportation assets, maybe not the whole service, but just a part of the transportation assets, okay? And it's focused on day-to-day -day operations. So it's important to say, okay, we have produced this, let's deliver it, right? We produce more, deliver it. They need, there is another order, produce and deliver. So it's like, that is the important part. So it's like producing, what is the process for, for us to, put that on the hands on the consumer and the carrier, that is the last part. The 4PL is most often non-asset based, meaning that they do not own the warehouse and the transportation assets. They, the third party company, they own everything. It's part of the outsourcing company. And, uh, the most important part is that they op try to optimize the supply chain. So that means that every department, uh, even the one that, even the company that brings the products to us, the, the raw materials, that has to be accurate. That has to be very efficient. So that is it. That is like uh, the main difference between 3PL and 4PL. So is this a little bit clear? Uh, do you have any questions about this? Only for, only for, it's a comment. In, okay. in 2000, in the year 2000, I work uh, for Telefonica Mobiles, but uh, <clears throat> I work in another company, the outsource of the, of the Telefonica Mobiles. But I'm, I, I do it all the work for Telefonica, but the company was the logistic operator. And you were using 4PL or 3PL? 3PL. Oh, very good, perfect. So yeah, yeah it's like uh, the distribution and the career is the part that is that, but yeah, you, are, you were separated, right? But there were some assets that were yeah, after, then after two years, uh, Telefonica Mobiles decide to uh, move it and they, they manage uh, their own logistics. Very well. Sometimes that happens, right? Sometimes uh, they prefer to get their, their control. Maybe that is the most important part for the companies that they have the control and they try to reduce costs. Sometimes they believe that purchasing the warehouse and the um, all the logistics assets is going to be. Uh, yeah, cheaper. the warehouse, the, the place, but also the fulfillment and all of these things, they have a third party. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Perfect, yeah. thank you. Okay, uh, is there any question about 3PL versus 4PL? Anybody? Hello. If you don't ask me, I believe that everything is fine and you understand the concepts at, as, at least, right? Uh, question for everybody, what is assets? Yeah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. You explain a review, the 3PL, 4PL, I'm, I'm confused. 
Okay, yeah, the 3PL is called 3PL because there are three parts. The first one is the business, right? The one that produce the products. The second one is the logistics that is not the same company, it's a third party company. And the last one is the career, the one that do the transportation. In the 4PL, uh, there are two main differences. The first one is that in the most of the companies that they use for PL, they don't own the, the assets for uh, the warehouse or things like that. They just produce. In the 3PL, sometimes they own the warehouse and some trucks, some cars, even when they have other company managing those things. But in 4PL, they don't own anything. They just produce. And the other difference, is that it's very important for them to optimize the supply chain. So that is different because in the 3PL is like only uh, the logistics and the distribution, but in the supply chain, and this is because these companies are larger than the other companies, is very, it has to be efficient. So even uh, when, uh, for example, when the company uh, purchase raw materials from other company that has to be very efficient you have an agreement a contract with that company and they uh, if they do not achieve their goal in time or in materials and quantity um, they have to pay something for you so it's, it's very very important that they are in time regarding all these things and of course between departments it has to be also very very important that is, that, those are the differences. So 3PL is like very basic. 3PL is like business, the um, logistics and the... Um, career. And the career, yeah, that is it, very well. And for the other one, it's also included that they need to optimize the supply chain. So that is very, very important for the 4PL. So it's a little bit clearer now? Yes, teacher, yes. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, it's very important. Remember that an advantage of being in this class is not only the English, right? And getting vocabulary, but also to know things that we don't know. A friend of mine used to say that the real education is when you know something that you didn't even know that you don't know. So when you get to know things, that is very good. Any it's questions? Like, it's like it's like general culture teacher. That is it. I mean, yeah, that is very important, you know, because I mean, here in the English class, we speak, we can speak about, of course, businesses, about movies, about the third world world that is menacing right now, the pandemic, about health, about politics well politics maybe it's not a good idea but we could discuss about that one so it's good to know and sometimes you know you never know when it's going to be something that you are going to use so that's why it's important to to understand a little bit about this questions before we move on okay so a 4PL can help a retailer e-commerce. Go ahead. Your question was, what is access? In oh, that the is true. Access uh -huh. Assets. are the goods of the company or use for the company. Uh, they give benefits to the company, mainly economic benefits. And in this case, transportation access is related to the vehicles, 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 and truck, and motorcycles, and the all type of the, the all kind of the transportation, the, the process of the logistic use for complete, uh, the functions, the functions, yeah. Very well, perfect. So that is it, assets in general is like uh, in 
accounting or in financials uh, is like the name of the goods that provides a benefit to the company, as Salmi said. So it can be anything. I mean, computers, it can be cars, it can be um, chairs, actually, for people to be sitting there working systems, right? Because the systems, you have to pay for them sometimes. And uh, in this case, talking about transportation assets is about vehicles, about the maintenance that you can get for this one. So that will be it. Good, perfect. So on the next one, it says a 4PL can help a retailer e-commerce. How? How it can be possible, that one? So here is it. But for first of all, um, what is e-commerce? Do you know? Is the is the um, the ship in uh, for email? Okay, very well. Email is part of the e-commerce, definitely. What else? Like a platform. Can you say platform? Platform. Platform. Okay, perfect. The Any process, other? The process for all process of sales using the website. Very good. Mm -hmm. Using websites, platforms, and things like that. What else? Online commerce online commerce very well so there are many ways of e-commerce actually the most formal of course they have a, like a website and then in the website you can place an order enter anything i mean it's going to be very convenient for companies because companies they just have to design that one of course it's very important to to have a website that is secure so if somebody is going to enter a credit card and an address and a phone number, uh, those house to be very, very secure. But there are other that are like more informal, like um, the social networking, for example, when they just promote and there is like a link for you to get more information, things like that is e-commerce. So retailers and e-commerce, it says that they allocate and place inventory to reduce missed opportunities. What do you understand on this one? Aha, uh -huh. what could be this? I don't know what is allocate. Allocate is just to put in a place. So allocate and place inventory to reduce missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. I understand what? like you have, you like a client, you, you can buy anything, you can, you can lose the opportunity, the pains to buy something. Okay, very good, perfect. That is a very good approach. Um, any other opinion on this? Amazon is an e-commerce? Amazon is an e-commerce, definitely. So that is, actually we're going to watch two videos about that one today, because it's uh, a very good example. Uh, but anybody understands this one, this little concept that is to allocate and place inventory. So we're talking about inventory to reduce missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, Anybody gets an idea what is this about? Okay. I was reading that is the process of, of tracking inventory. Okay, very well. Mm -hmm. So tracking across, across the distribution network, let's say. Okay. So for example, in Amazon, that happens. In Amazon mm -hmm. is that, I mean, they have many warehouses in the US, not only one, mm -hmm. right? So that happens. And uh, what happens if, uh, let's say Nelson 
comes to Amazon and he wants to purchase um, a device, any device, a cell phone, a tablet, a computer. And he says, I mean, go ahead, tell me. I'm sorry, teacher. The scope of the business is huge because uh, throughout the program, uh, identify the, the needs in um, big space. Very good. Mm -hmm. So yes, imagine if you have many warehouses across the US and Nelson comes and place an order for a computer and then uh, we guarantee that he's going to receive that one. Maybe in the warehouse one, warehouse two, warehouse three, we don't have that product, but yes, we have that one in the warehouse number four. But we have also that one in the warehouse number five. So we can decide, oh, it's better for us to send from the warehouse number five because it's closer to the customer. We're going to reduce spending time in the transportation, spending money in gasoline and many other things. And the customer is going to be satisfied. So you are going to reduce missed opportunities, meaning that if it's available in one of the warehouse across the US, you will be able, you will be able to, to sell that one and earn money, gain some money. So that we is- were, We were, now we were talking something about, uh, we are talking pharmacies or medicines. For example, if I have a, how do you say receta? Oh my God. A, prescription. Oh uh, yeah, a prescription for the doctor. And I ask, uh, in the in the drugstore i need this but they only have one of three and they nowadays they uh, ask for the other branch and they they make the the my God, the pedido the order they place an order they yeah they place an order and they tell me uh, okay we we have the three the three medicines that you need and why we uh, which super cell which branch do you need to send you and it's for us for uh, the customer is is nice because i don't have to go to there and there only in one place it's all uh, together that is it i mean you as a customer you are happy you don't have to go to other place because that is what is going to happen i mean if you go to a store even if it's online if you go to amazon to siman to any store and you don't find there what you're looking for then you decide i'm going to go to other place and you then, you lose that opportunity. You miss that opportunity to, to make a sell. So this is this is this um, definition, this little concept is about that one. So if you have inventory, uh, and that's why we call this four in four PLs because there are many other providers, right? Many other companies, they have that product. Sometimes actually in Amazon, you will see that there are different pricing for the same product. And it's because of that. It's because they have different retailers across the US, but they manage sometimes different pricing. And Amazon earns some money just by having people clicking on the website. So it's very, very com convenient. And that's why Amazon and places like that are very, very popular. So I guess the first one is a little bit clear. The second one, we already discussed that or uh, on the first part, but let's check onto that one. Uh, let's see. Um, Flor, could you please read uh, the second one, a chip? Yes, teacher. A chip, someday delivery of online purchases, the guards, of location. Perfect. What do you understand in this one? And I think um, about the uh, 
the delivery. Okay. The, the different product, for example, uh, Hugo, maybe. Yes, but the different that is a little bit more 3PL to be honest with you because there is the business, the logistics that is also Google because there is like a website so you can place an order and many things and they send the order to the to the store and then they also send the the driver right the 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 rider of the motor back to the place so they can deliver it so exactly that is 3PL but in 4PL it's a little bit more advanced. Because as we say, the companies are larger. And okay. uh, uh, yes, as we, uh, anybody has an idea on this one? Hold on. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, in, in the second uh, paragraph, uh, when the e-commerce, um, the um, for example, Siman, uh, if you buy in online Siman, you you choose in what location uh, where you live. In, in that cases, the enterprise, uh, for example, Siman, uh, achieve in in the same day a delivery your product or your or your. Uh, brand if uh, that you buy in in the website for example and uh, when uh, with is a strategy the enterprise or companies reduce um, delivery um, the product in three days for example uh, in that cases the company reduce the days in in some cases in the same day uh, delivery the product very good so that is it right so this is linked to the first one when you have inventory in many places for example Simon maybe have different products or the same product in different locations you can choose uh, and they reduce they reduce of course the time and of course the costs so they have more money they spend less money on delivering that product. And uh, they, I mean, the profit as, uh, as usually in this kind of situation is the most important part. So uh, same day, maybe sometimes it's not same day delivery. Sometimes it's two, three business days, but three days is good. I mean, three days is fantastic, right? You can purchase a TV and get that in two days in your, in your house. So that's what they do. And this is for Hi. PL. Go ahead. I was reading the, the, the word regardless. It's anyway. It's uh, similar anyway. But I I think that, it, yes, e-commerce, but I was remember that in person, I leave this because someday I went to a shoe store and I like it one one shoe, one pair of shoes, and I say, I ask, I need this, but red in number five. Did you did you have it? And she look at the machine there, the machine there. I don't know how can I say the handheld mm -hmm. that she, he, and maybe in another in another place in the same commerce uh, in the same mall, and she told me. Oh yes, we have in in another in another place. Wait a moment, and I and and we bring you the the shoes and somebody go and I was there uh, and waiting for a moment and they give me the pair of shoes that I need. Yeah, I and think that, that uh -huh. mm -hmm, and I was satisfied because I didn't move. And like I have the the shoes that I need. Perfect. Yeah, actually that happens. That's why it says here that a 4PL can help a retailer and an e-commerce. So because 
the bigger that they are and the more warehouses and locations they have uh, more products, they can do that kind of things. And the good thing is that that on, not only happens now in the US, that only, also happens here in El Salvador, right? So we are moving on. We are getting new systems. So that is very, very good. So it's very, very nice. So um, as I was telling you, sometimes it's not some day, but two or three days is fantastic as well. So the last one, let's see. Um, Carla, could you please read the last one? Uh, Archiv. Yes, please. Same day inventory replenish, re replenishment. Very good. So some day inventory replenishment. Uh, what do you understand there in that one? Uh, I, I understand that um, it's possible that a uh, similar uh, F schedule, mm -hmm. F schedule for, for the review that inventory uh, I don't know. I don't have idea about this. Uh, do you know what is replenishment? No, I don't know okay. what, what I mean. More vocabulary, good. It's to replace, to restore something that you sold. So for example, if, for example, as, as Rose was saying, she needed that pair of shoes in red in five. So they sold that pair and they can place an order. Hey, we need another pair of this one because we sold it. So they replace the pair of shoes. So replenishment is, is a, a formal word for, for you to replace when you replace the inventory. So- Oh, okay. I understand. Uh, in other words, it's possible is a, a refill of a product that is it. So, but in inventory, the word is replenishment. replenishment. That is like uh, to, to have that in stock again. Again, teacher, again, purchase inventory or? That is it. So merchant, sometimes. Merchant. Yeah, the merchandise. Okay. okay. Um, is a new word for my vocabulary. Very good, that's nice. So yes, so at this point, the good thing is that whenever you see or you still want to sell this product, you can place an order or you can say to the uh, producers, to the business producers, hey, we need more of this. Okay, so they it's, place an order and the other can bring that one, go ahead. Okay, it's possible that replenishment is a once a week activity, for example. Or once a was a, a each month. That depends on the business. So, it for depends, example, here yes. here it says achieve same day inventory replacement. So uh, that means that some companies, whenever you sell something, in the very moment there is an automatic in the system, there goes an automatic order. I need one of these, another of these, three more of these, so the companies can produce that um, one and replace. Yes, this uh, is a connection with uh, outgrade uh, in the inventory, daily inventory. That is it. So it's like, a, a, that, this is logistics. I mean, some yeah. people believe that logistics is just to move one thing from A to B, but it's not. It's all of this. It's like be ready for not losing opportunities. Remember that if a customer goes to other store, and he sees or she sees more things there, maybe it's not coming back to you. So it's not that you are going to lose one cell only, you might lose one customer. So uh, companies, they fight for customers, right? So they are doing their best so they can keep the loyalty of the customers. Yes, uh, I think that is very important this, this last point in, in their any business because it's very important uh, that uh, some business, uh, any business uh, always 
uh, account with a uh, with a uh, inventory of the product because uh, is because is if pardon, because if if you don't have inventory you don't uh, sells for example that is it i mean everything is linked and this yeah. is logistics so you you need to plan this in advance so you don't lose any salt so everything works properly so everything is fast efficient and you keep all your customers good any questions on this slide Ooh, okay so now we're going to check the other one so here we go a little bit beyond we have 3 pl we have 4 pl and we have 5 pl so let's check into that one in 3 pl says a fulfillment company packs bananas stores them and transport them from farm to grocery store so that is 3 pl as you can see there are three things the first one is uh, the pack of the bananas i mean they don't produce bananas but they have some bananas and they pack they put in a package and then they store them for a few days of course not that many days and they they transport them from a farm or from the warehouse to the grocery store so this is 3pl it is very clear and at the end you eat your banana at home any question with the 3PL model? This is the 3PL model. Exactly like this, three things, three different stages. Of course, here in the middle, there are systems, there are procedures, quality procedures, uh, movement procedures, but the most basic is like three. Questions on the 3PL? No questions. What is an example of 3PL? Companies that you know that are 3PL? Okay, maybe we don't know that many companies, right? The problem is that we know companies, but we don't know the way they work. So probably they are the one or the other way. Let's check the 4PL. So a logistics company strategically, look at the word that they use, strategically manage a 3PL on behalf of the farmer to package, store, deliver bananas to grocery store. So it's the same that we have here, but they hire a company to create strategies about logistics, like the one that we saw in the video. In this case, we hire a company. There is a company that comes to our company to handle everything. So we want to sell bananas, but they are the ones who are going to do the procedures, the steps. Might be that we have some assets, might be that we don't have any assets on the warehouse or transportation. But in this case, it's also included this part, logistics. Okay, so this is 4PL because there are four elements. And the last one is 5PL. So this is a logistics company manages a farmer complete supply chain network from production to delivery. So in the first one, it was about packaging bananas, only packaging also in the, in the first one. So in these first two, it's about packaging bananas. We don't produce bananas. But in the last part is the whole procedure. We plant the bananas, we produce the bananas, we hire a logistic company so they can help us with everything that should be done so we can deliver that one and then package then goes to the warehouse and they deliver it to the store everything all the procedure that is five pl go ahead uh, four pl and five pl produce the bananas no in the four pl they just package the bananas maybe they purchase only, only package uh-huh uh-huh 
And Only in the... 5 PL produced. Yeah, that is the complete chain supply. So it's going to be the whole all, thing. All the production, all production. All the production, delivery, the strategies, and, and uh, until that is in the stores. So it's going to be the whole thing. Backpack packages, packages. Also packaging, yeah. It's going to be packaging included. Very good. Okay, so I guess that now it's a little bit more clear, right? What is 3PL? So 3PL is like a package store and deliver to the store. And the 4PL- process basic of the logistic. Yeah, like, like all the companies, they do that one, right? So even small pupuserias here in El Salvador, they do that right now, right? Sometimes you can call, hey, I need five of cheese, three of whatever, and they, they say, okay, they call uh, the transportation, they package everything and they call the transportation and that is delivered. So even in small businesses, they are doing logistics already. Sometimes it's not accurate because sometimes you receive something that you didn't ask. But I mean, they are small businesses. They, they do not have the knowledge and they don't have the resources, right? So that is fine. But yeah, this is like the most basic, the most basic model. In the second one includes the logistical company that makes strategies. Because here we need to think is if it's going to be better to transport at night, if it's going to be better to, to have a refrigerator for the bananas, um, what about the temperature? I mean, many things are included. And in the last part also is the producer. So that is it. Questions about the comparative on these three models? No questions, or maybe too many questions. Okay, let's no. move on. Okay, good. Let's check this little thing here. So yeah, we have, of course, if we have three PL, we have one PL, right? So the one PL is like a farmer who delivers X to a grocery store for sale. There is no intermediary here. It's like I produce and I deliver it. I do all the process, but it's a very basic thing. And of course I cannot deliver a lot. Um, I mean, it's going to be very, very basic. So that is one PL, okay? The two PL is, for example- One PL, one PL or only a store, distribution. Okay, one PL produces and delivers. The same person, the same activity, very basic. No have intermediaries. No. Exactly. They are yeah. not third party, no outsourcing here. The producer, the producer did it in, in a client or store. Directly to the store. They go to the store and he says, hey, would you like to buy some eggs? Yeah, bring some eggs. Like the little stores in the neighborhoods, you know, uh, that the producers, they go and say, would you like to, to sell my bread? Yeah, yeah, bring some bread and I'm going to sell it. So that is it. It's a very basic thing. We can use example like companies for maybe here the main difference is the size i mean if the farmer also delivers the egg probably he's not going to deliver a lot of eggs there are just i mean maybe there are many but not that many maybe a pickup that is the most right or maybe a truck one truck for many stores if he has a lot of hands of course so this is like the most basic level, okay? In the 2PL, it's included also the, the delivery, the transportation. A courier delivers eggs from farms to grocery store. So in this, the difference is that the farmer don't go out from the farm. So a, a, another company comes and say, why don't you sell me the, the eggs and I'm going to go and deliver them. So there is one part, this, the blue one here is the third party, is the outsourcing. 
So it's included here. Okay, the 3PL as we checked is a fulfillment company with a fleet of trucks, cartoons, eggs and transport them from farm to grocery store. So here it's a lot and we have a fleet of trucks, meaning that we have five, 10, 25 trucks delivering eggs. So this is a farm. This is a larger than the other one. In the 4PL, is too large. So that's why we need somebody to come and create logistics for us. So they manage the warehouse and also the delivery, which you can see here. So how is growing the blue part? The third party, the outsourcing is growing until it goes to the grocery store. And the last one, the 5PL, let's say that is similar to the 1PL, but the difference is that in the 1PL, we deliver only one thing. In the 5PL, there are many things that we deliver, a lot of things. And that's why we need to produce a lot. I mean, sometimes we have many producing companies and then we have the logistics, the warehouse. So this is the difference. The difference is the blue part, as you can see. In the first one, there is no third party. And the second one, yeah, the delivery is the third party. And the third one, the warehousing, uh, the, um, well, the packaging, the warehousing and the delivery. And the other one, oh, this is too big. We need to have a company that comes and designs logistics for us so we can handle all the production. And then the last part is going to be everything from the produce to the, uh, let's say wholesaler or retailer stores handle it. So this is the difference, the blue part. Okay, here we can see exactly how is the difference between one and another. So do you have any questions? Not teacher, thank you. It's very clear, right? I know like that for yeah. Like horchata, good. It's comprehensive in that way. Yeah, I know that some uh, for some of you, maybe this is the very first time that you read and check about this one, but it's a good thing. I mean, it's not complicated. It's kind of easy. I mean, it's, it's easy to explain it. The difficult part is to do the things right, because to write procedures, flow charts, and do many things out, that is so complicated. Ooh, okay, uh, let me see. So, this is a little bit more about first part logistic 1PL. So for you to understand a little bit better. The supplier ships goods to the customer using transportation it owns and manages. So this is the first part of logistic, that 1PL, right? The key point of differentiation transportation is handled internally by the supplier and is not outsourced, as we say before. This is internal. I do that myself. The second party logistic, the 2PL, is outsourced transportation. Just the transportation is outsourced. But then we need, to, we need to invest money, right? So the supplier contracts a career that owns and manages its own means of transportation to pick up goods and deliver to the customer. And the key point of differentiation is transportation is handled by a second party career but the choice of career is up to the supplier. So I can decide who is going to be my career. I can be two careers, it can be many careers. Then we have the third party, the 3PL. Third party logistics. So this is a little bit more complex. The supplier contracts a freight forwarder who in turn identifies and dispatches the optimum career for the assignment to pick up and deliver goods to the customer. So the optimal career, not any career. So here we have the supplier that pays to the, this is like the warehouse, the packaging and warehouse, right? And this person decides what is the career that he is going to use and goes to the customer. 
So the key point of differentiation transportation is handled by a second party career, but the choice of career is up to the third party freight. So it's the packaging, the warehouse is the one who decides the career that he's going to use. And then it goes to the customer. Okay. And then we have the other one, the fourth, that is going to be like this. The fourth party logistic that is 4PL, at source supply chain management, all the supply chain. Okay. So the supply outsources its supply chain management to lead logistics provider. So here is not just a warehouse, it's a provider on logistics. The lead logistics supplier that then contacts the optimum freight forwarder to dispatch the optimum carrier for the assignment. And here is the little, the little flow, the supplier, okay, and the logistics provider. So he has a deal with the logistics provider. And this one has a deal with a warehouse and packaging. And this one has a deal with a career. And this one goes to the customers. So the key differentiation is transportation is handled by a second party career selected by a third party freight forwarder who in turn is selected by a fourth party lead logistics provider managing the suppliers overarching supply chain strategy. So here is like easier for us to see with, with little pictures, right? Do you have any questions about this? This is like the same, but in a different way. No questions. Okay, let's uh, stop a little while and we're going to check the attendance. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Salmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present teacher. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present teacher. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis. Present. Ah, oh, perfect. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Here. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good, perfect. Let me just check. Okay, we're going to do a little stop on the business thing and we're going to check some, another reading that I have for you. Let's see how it goes. I know that sometimes, um, speaking about business sometimes all night long is not that good so we're going to check about this that i found a little bit interesting these are 10 kind of strange customs around the world 
So let's see how it goes. Uh, Flor, could you please read the first one? La tomatina is pain. First up is la tomatina, the largest tomato file in the world. It's not quiet, not how it came about, but there are many tears surrounding, su surrounding, surrounding, surrounding it. Surrounding it. One of the most popular is that dur during a part of gigantes. In uh, y cabezudos. <laughs> in 1945, those who weren't inclined in the event started a brawl in the main score using tomato from a lo local vegetable stand as weapons. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yes, please, just, just the other one. Okay, regardless, this annual festival is held in Buñol, Spain on the last Wednesday of August of Par of the week of festival in Buñol and quite literary consent of people throwing tomatoes at each other for fun. Very good, perfect. What do you understand about this activity? What, they, what do they do? I don't know. <laughs> Anybody? What did understand about this one? La tomatina screen. Yes, teacher. I think uh, it's a, a party a tradition in Spain. Very good. That is it. It's like a tradition there in Spain. And what they do is that on the street, they have a fight of tomatoes, right? A lot of tomatoes and you are full of tomato in your clothes, in your head, in every, everybody. It's like, it's like crazy. Swing, swinging tomato. Yeah. Tomato. <laughs> Imagine that is kind of crazy, right? It's possible that this season there, there are excess of tomatoes. It's traditional. Yeah. Activity, no traditional cult. In, in, in its culture, is maybe has sense, but yeah. In my opinion, there is a. How do you say the desperdicio de tomate? Waste. It's a waste, <laughs> waste of tomatoes. Of the tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> I, really, I really love tomatoes too. So I, I don't know. <laughs> that is a lot of tomatoes that I'm not gonna eat. So. <laughs> okay, so question for you. Would you do this activity? Would you like to go to Spain to fight in tomatoes? Anybody would like to do that? No, teacher. Also, the tomatoes are rotting. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. That won't be good, right? No. Yeah. Am I in going home after that one? I mean, take a shower after no. that. No. <laughs> oh, my God. No. That should be something, <laughs> something strange. Okay. No, the process of the clean of the different streets. Yeah, that should be, uh, I mean... <laughs> a lot of people should be involved in that one just because of the party, right? Okay, uh, Mayra, could you please help me with the second one? Yes, teacher. Smashing coconuts and people's schools in India. 
breaking coconuts on people's heads is a ritual <laughs> that has been around for a long time in southern parts of India. Their extreme superstition has caused this to become an obsession and therefore this, despite, despite. Warn, despite warning, they have continued to perform this act that has been around science the colonial period. Devoted to the Hindu religion will gather inside the temple and the priest will smash a coconut on the head of each of them one after the other as a sign to the gods. They are asking for good health and success. The subject will them usually walk away, walk away as if um, faced by the event. Okay, what did you understand on this one? Um, this is a ritual very extreme. Extreme. <laughs> I think that before this ritual, the people had headache. Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like in mind to go and get somebody to smash a coconut in your head. Oh my goodness, that is that is not good, right? <laughs> yeah, but I think. In coconut, uh, but uh, I can cook. Yeah, we can drink those things, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay, I was going to ask you if you will do anything like this, but I guess the answer for everybody is no, right? We'll, <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll never do anything like that. But, you know, cultures are, are totally different, right? People in other countries, they believe they do different stuff. It's so, excuse me. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, it is a ritual religious, religious, yeah. Yeah, it's a religious ritual, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they go to to uh, the temple. Inside of the temple, and one priest will come and smash a coconut on your head. <laughs> wow. Not good, right? <laughs> no, not like. We're better here in El Salvador, you know. Okay, the other one says Festival of Scrambled Elks in Bosnia. So let's see, Pamela, could you please read this one? Hello, Pamela, are you here? Okay, Guadalupe, could you please help me with this one? Yes. Festival of Scrambled Egg in Bosnia. And whereas in the UK, we might celebrate the start of a spring by speaking song that, that for deal or doing as a spring clean. In Seneca, Bosnia, they make, make the start of the season with an unsolid tributo to Scambert Egg, uh, now in Bosnia as Sibir, Sibir, Simburi, Simburihala. Okay. Uh, they start the days as they mean to go on with a large breakfast uh, of egg, cook it in a large pan in the city park near the river. They then spend the rest on the day parting a barbecue, barbecue, barbecuing, and, barbecuing and jumping into the river. Okay, so this is a little bit interesting. What did you understand on this one? Festival of Scrammed Elks. I think it's, it's, it's very nice because uh, they eat with the, the friends and family 
on the river. Yeah, that seems, seems nice, right? Like, I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of strange, but it's nice. I mean, if you, mm -hmm. I mean, the first day of spring, uh, that is just in that town that is Seneca. Um, they do like a tribute uh, to scramble eggs known as Simburiada. And they start the day like with a large breakfast of eggs cooked in a large pan in a city part near the river. So that is a lot of eggs. And everybody's mm -hmm. there waiting for the breakfast. And at the end, they go and do some party, barbecuing, and they go into the river. So that sounds good Would, uh, for everybody. Would you like to do uh, these kind of activities? Yes, teacher. That would be interesting, right? Nice. It's not that, that strange. <laughs> Thank you. So the next one is throwing cinnamon at a 25 years old in Denmark. Let's see. Um, Adriana, could you please read this one? Yes. In Denmark, in Denmark, if you turn in 25 and are unmarried, not only do you have to face Valentine's Day alone, but you also must enter your friends and family submerging you in a clove of cinnamon. This long studying tradition in Denmark is customary if a man or woman turns 25 and is a style single. First, firstly, they get explanation with water and they, they and then they get covered from head to to oh. to to toe in cinnamon. It's not a form of push, push, punish, punishment, punishment, mm -hmm. but more just an excuse to be a style with friends and family. And it's a tradition that dates but hundreds of years. Okay, very good, perfect. What did you understand on this one, Adriana? Yes, in this, in this activity in Denmark, tradition, and, 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 and where the man or woman and then stay in the in the stay in the cinnamon for la long time. Okay. Yeah, so here in Denmark, that is strange actually. In Denmark, if you are 25 in your 25th birthday, even if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, but if you are not married, okay your friends are going to get you and are going to submerge you into water Cinnamon. with cinnamon in my end. It's, it's completely, you are going to be covered by water with cinnamon. So what do you think about this tradition? Anybody? If you like the cinnamon and you aren't allergic. <laughs> That's not a good idea, right? <laughs> yeah, probably you need to get married before <laughs> just to avoid that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, the next one says the Monkey Buffet Festival in Thailand. Um, Jansi, could you please read this one? Hello, Jancy. Are you here with us? Not here. Okay. Let's see. Who else is there? Uh, teacher. Okay. Hello. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Okay. The monkey. Yeah, please. The monkey. The monkey. Monkey buffet festival in Thailand on the last Sunday of November. Of November, something. Rated spectacular. It's a little big stream. Happens in Spra, Spra, France. It's okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> just temple is Lombardy, Thailand. A, a ladies' back, banquet 
is banquet. today ban banquet. Uh -huh. banquet is lay lay out in a big celebration in hell, but not for humans. The fest is held in honor and love for thousands on makers makers macaques 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 that supposedly bring good luck to the area and its occupants and therefore they are the special guests in a party the festival includes perform performance and then dancers in monkey consumer customer during the opening ceremony and towers its fruits and vegetable vegetable vegetables vegetable and which the monkey climb jumps and include in those oh, very well what did it's you understand of this <laughs> it's crazy right what what do you understand about this one what do they do um, i know this festival in thailand you didn't in know that? this area uh-huh i i don't know but it is different in this are uh, American area and it's new for me. Yeah, that is crazy. I mean, am I to cook a lot of food for the monkeys? Mm, yes. Well, <laughs> that's crazy. I don't know, but I mean, every culture is different, right? So I have heard or seen other that are kind of strange as well, but these are kind of funny actually. Okay. It's different uh, and thing. respectable too. That's the thing, right? So we we for us is strange, but for them, uh, it's like, uh, I mean, it's normal, right? They do it and they say maybe, maybe your friend called you and say, "Are you going to the monkey festival? Yeah, let's go together." Very very happy, but for us, it's like what? <laughs> what? What is that? I don't know. The is is in honor. Uh, what is Labur? Uh, yeah, the thing is that Labur is like the, it's a place. And it's supposed that they believe that there, in that place, there are a lot of monkeys that are macaques, that is a, a kind of monkey, that bring good luck to this city. So once a year, they go and do that, that banquet, that festival with food for the monkeys. Monkeys well, and Monkeys in Thailand are, how do you say, holy or sacred? Uh, I was uh, yeah, really? Do the, you know? The, the, uh, the monkeys in Thailand are holy. Yeah, you know, it's kind of strange. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The monkeys in Thailand are, are, are looking at kings. <laughs> I was reading something. On, I see a documentary about monkeys in Thailand. In my Yes. So there are different Crazy. things, right? Yeah, because Crazy. yeah, for us it's like strange, but for them it's like okay, that's normal. Yes. Yeah, there are many other things. For example, I was reading also that in Thailand is forbidden, is you cannot touch the head of a kid. That is forbidden. It's not good. So if you go and touch the head of a kid, anybody's going to say, Oh my goodness, look what he's doing. Why my god? So because they believe that the soul is there in the hell and kids are pure. So you cannot do that. Teacher, in Thailand, in Bangkok, uh, every people are crazy. Yeah, that country. Yeah. Is, <laughs> I, is remember a music, I remember a music when I in Bangkok. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's beautiful, you know, there are many good things, but I mean, strange is that for us, it's not good, right? It's, it's like, wow, what are you doing? Uh, I, I, I was working with a company with some, a lot of people from Thailand. And for example, once we saw the picture of a, a new person that was going to work with us, her name was, I don't remember her name. It was a girl with long hair very nice you know and then we, we were in a meeting but via call we, it was a phone call 
And when she was going to speak, she was like, yes, hello. My name is, he was a man. And we were like, mm, okay, that's strange. Well, anyways. So the next one is going to be for Zulma. Could you please read the next one? Yes. Uh, por Paul Draven in Germany. Por Draven meaning wedding shower is a unique tradition in Germany that is generally held the day before a bride and run are due to when it is big party where friends and family gather at the front of the house and smash things on the floor such as plates, floor pots, tiles, anything that makes a lot of noise in order to bring good, good luck. The only exception being glass and mirror, of course. Once the ditch breaking is done, the bride and groom the work together to clean up, to clean it up as preparation for the future. Okay. Imagine this one. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get married because I need to destroy lots of things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you think about this one? The problem is the bride and groom uh, are uh, are the work clean up all the destroys. That is it. So that is not good, right? That the groom and the bride are going to clean all the mess, and that is not good. And the noise. I mean. Yes. Good luck. I mean, it might be that that true. Good luck uh, uh, breaking something. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. break. I break a, a window uh, oh. yesterday. I have a good luck. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, perfect. Oh my god! But here, if you break a mirror, you have seven years of bad luck. <laughs> In mine, that's not good, right? <laughs> That is not good at all. Yes. Okay. Let's see. The next one is for Ophelia. Okay. Uh, shopping has passed in, in Mexico. I, I prefer one of the best traditions on this list is la mordida, mordida. The uh, Mexican Bridays tradition. I guess Bridays here or board with has dairy house building green dairy box and when they go to market, market the freeze, freeze of kite. I guess we have very fast pushing thing into is with I the rest of the party with with chore more 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 Spanish I more I more 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 Important to not I dare I does Mexican Kaikas are pretty very grainy. Okay, very good. So this is for us is not that strange, right? For us is like I mean now is becoming popular uh, in El Salvador as well. So you uh, you try to bite the cake and somebody pushes your head. So that is kind of normal. So what do you think about this one? It's not that strange, right? Well, in my opinion, is. But maybe other people it's, may. Uh -huh. Go ahead. It's so funny, but for uh, some people, are um, how do you say fastidious? Fastidious. Or it's maybe annoying. An annoying, annoying. Yeah, but I think that is funny. But I was reading something that it was uh, dangerous because. Uh, someone have an accident in that way with that uh, kind of how do you say 
joke, no, bromas. I don't joke. know how to say it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so dangerous because uh, uh, maybe the cake has some, uh, I don't know. But I was reading something bad and that was an accident doing this. And I say, oh my God, I don't do that <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, many things might be happening. If you push somebody, of course, many, many things might be bad. Uh, so, yeah, for us, this is not that bad, but maybe if you ask somebody in Thailand, they will say, oh, that's not good. That is very strange, right? So uh, have you ever done this? Have you ever pushed somebody into the cake? Anybody? Yes, my nephews. I put okay. my nephew. <laughs> mordida, mordida, I put. <laughs> okay. But, but a little, no, all because yeah. we have to we have to eat the cake. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right? Yeah, so. no, only or maybe you you take some cream in your finger and put in the nose. <laughs> okay. And that's great. all. Uh-huh. But not put the face down in the yeah. cake. No. Yeah. No, because... in that way. No, in that way. No. Okay. Yeah, actually, if you do that a lot, I mean, with a lot of force, nobody's going to eat cake, right? Because it's destroyed. Okay, the next one says battle Before, of the... Go ahead. For me, it's, it's the waste uh, cake. Yeah, it's not good, right? We, it's better to eat than to, <laughs> to push. But anyways, if you do it a little bit, that is fine. Okay, a battle of the oranges in Italy. Let's see, um, Rafael, could you please read this one? Hello, Rafael. Sorry, teacher. Okay. Uh, yes, the one for you is battle of the oranges in Italy. Yes. Every year, and three days leading up to Mary's press, something rather strange takes place in Ivrea, 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 Italy. The residents divide up into nine different squads and dress in battle attire. Then over the next few days, they lean orange at each other to try and kill the other teams. The origins of this game are unclear, but it has become the largest food pie in Italy. However, not quite as big as La Tomatina Jet. La Tomatina Jet. Very good. So this is another one with food, right? I believe food is very popular for parties to, to fight. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I believe that probably it's better tomatoes because tomatoes are soft. Oranges, mm, I believe that can damage you, right? So it's kind of dangerous in my opinion. But is it better than coconut, teacher? Oh, yeah, that is the crazy one, right? Coconut is not good. I mean, I will never do that. Maybe tomatoes or oranges might be, but never coconuts. That is the winner. <laughs> Okay, finger cutting on the Danny tribe. Let's see, Susana. Okay, finger cutting on the Danny tribe. Everyone grieves differently after the loss of a loved one, but the woman of the Danny tribe in Indonesia have cute, a unique and severe way of dealing with it. When they lose a love, one the top joint of a woman's finger will be amputated. A string will be thinly tied around the finger until it goes numb, and then a family member, often a, a sibling or parent will cut, will cut off the top of the finger. The wound is then born to stop the blending and prevent infection. The process is carried good to symbolize the pain suffered after the loss of a loved one and two. I can read. 
and to uh, keep okay, okay there is it and to keep the this is person spirit away okay well this is the craziest one so far what do you think about this is there many words i don't know what does it mean well, but the general idea, do you understand? But I have the idea, yes. The, uh -huh. the curing of the finger if, uh, if you nice. are alone. Okay. Yeah, but this is like a ritual. They do it together with some family. So they say that they um, tight around the finger something, right? So, uh, so you don't feel anything. And then they cut just the, the top of the joint of the finger. And then they they burned. I mean, that is that's if crazy. If I lose a love, a loved one, yeah. My God, <laughs> that's insane. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, right? Yes. <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> that's the word for this one. It's yes. bizarre, definitely. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> will you will you will you do something like that? Anybody? Oh my god. <laughs> this now activity I... is not actually all, all right. I'm sorry. Uh, this activity is in this case is actual. Yeah, yeah, in the Dani tribe, yeah. They do that nowadays. You know, some tribes that are in, in Africa or places like that, they still do things like this. So um maybe here in El Salvador we don't know anything about them, right? But there are people that still live naked there on uh, on the forest and they do some kind of stuff that are maybe there are less than before of course the world is moving but they still have some rituals like this this is is very bad in five uh, party i don't have a finger yeah i mind i mind that that's not good so that's why sometimes some some people sometimes they say here in El Salvador we're not good, right? But there are places where you can be worse. So let's check the last one. Okay, uh, baby tossing in India is going to be for. Let me see who has some red. Let's see, uh, Nelson, could you please read this one? Yes, teacher. Okay, baby. Baby Thompson in India. You may want to sit down for his one. In India, they have a river with them that involves strong wind. New, newborn babies of the side of the temple. Oh. If you got married at the 50 foot high city, Sunset World, simply. In India, it's a tradition to return with your, your your baby and drop them from the tops onto clothes that the hair be uh -huh. in the hair be boots missing missing in the Hindi below. The oh sorry, the these are some of the strategies, the tradition, but are true. The many seem absurd the the design. They are the way of life, of life for other of the native believe that they have a very good reason for their action. Wow. <laughs> what do you think about this? <laughs> That's what it's, it's my, my baby is, is the day they, they born. It's, it's terrible. It's the, the dog and the, and the weather. Yeah. yeah. It's this terrible. is not good, right? Imagine that you need to go to the top of the temple and throw your newborn baby. I mean, it's a newborn baby, days of being born, and you throw it. I mean, that's not good. <laughs> what do you think about this one? Anybody? They are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a crazy. It's dangerous. It's, it's very, very. The race is high. Yes, they are yeah. very, very it's crazy. Very, yes, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's the yeah. craziest tradition in the world. 
And you can see that this tradition, I mean, in India, there are many traditions like this. Oh, right? yes, yes. So that, that kind of countries, they have a lot of things. Thanks, like God, that. we are in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's better to be here than get fat yes. eating pupusas, and we're yes. happy. <laughs> but is... we have the specific Greek traditional with the baby, for example, when now less go ahead <laughs> than compared with the in the past but the process to with the baby the, as you say pain the the foot we put the head down ah it's yeah that, was, that they they put it back and they do something on the on the feet right so Yes, it's dangerous for the babies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every country has their own traditions. Which traditions do you know from El Salvador that are not, that are kind of crazy, let's say? I, I was listening, I think that the only, for me, the only crazy tradition here are the bolas de fuego in Mejapa. Mejapa, yeah. yeah. For me, that's crazy. That is throwing crazy. ball of fire. So I don't know, my God. It's so dangerous. <laughs> that is dangerous. I mean, if you say that to other person in another country, maybe they would say, my goodness, why <laughs> would you do that? <laughs> right. And uh, there is also the other one that they hit you, right? When you are in the, uh, in a parade, something like that. And they hit you with, uh, with some pieces of, of leather. So, there are traditions, I mean, there are many traditions that we have some might be different from other people, right? Or crazy. Any other tradition that you may know here in El Salvador? Yes, teacher. Um, and here, Antiochus Catlan, the party, um, the party the, in December. Oh, and uh, how do you say que my polvora? Uh, that is powder, powder burnt. Uh -huh. I don't, don't remember the name. And uh, the firecracker. Uh -huh. uh -huh. como el, oh, el toro. El, ay, yes, that came my pole, but it's very good. for me. That is like that is like a dance, right? That you have that somebody does, and there are uh, with a bull. There are some firecrackers mm -hmm. and things like that. Yes. Okay, very good. Yeah, that is kind of dangerous. Heck, <laughs> okay. Any other tradition? Yeah. Hearing El Salvador that you believe is kind of strange. No more things. No more traditions. Okay, very good. We're going to continue then. This was a little stop in the, in the one that we were checking. Let me see here. Okay, we're going to continue with the presentation. We just have two more slides and then we're gonna continue with the book. Okay, so while I, uh, we are speaking also, uh, still about the three PLs, okay? So uh, there are some factors and some benefits that we can check into that one. So um, let's see, we're going to start reading. Um, Rose, could you please read the first one? It's going to be the factor and then the benefit. Okay, factors, volatile, unpredictable, and rapid demand for logistics. Uh, benefits, flexibility. Very good. What do you understand on this one? My God, factors. Volatile, predictable, and rapid demand for logistics. Benefits, flexibility. Unpredictable. So this is like the first one is like, you mind that you need, you have that need. And uh, what happens is that it's volatile. For example, it can change from one day to another if you do it yourself. And it's unpredictable because you never know what is going to happen if you're not ready or if you are not an expert. Rapid demand for logistics means that, uh, yeah, probably you are going to, if you do it yourself, you won't be able to, 
to fix the problems that might arise um, in things that, or in, in, in ways that you are not prepared. But if you have a 3PL, a, a, an outsourcing, mm, it's I going to be. Flexibility. Exactly. Ah, that's the benefit. That's ah, okay. The benefit. Mm -hmm. okay. So the first one is like, like facts and the second one is like the benefits if you get a third party logistics. So flexibility okay. is like they can hire more people, they can get another warehouse, they can get more trucks for transportation. But if you do it yourself and if you need a lot of product to be transported, for example, you say, my goodness, what do I do right now? Right? So that will be like the idea on this one. Okay, the next one is going to be for Osmin. Could you please read the next one? Okay, teacher. Uh, I, I, I now look the screen. It's intense. Do you see this? Intense investment. Right. Okay. Yes, teacher. Intense investment require, requirement for logistics mm -hmm. and reduction in cost, right mitigation. And risk mitigation. What do you understand on this one? And refer the uh, uh, work for logistics uh, is important for reduction the money uh, and rise in mitigation the product. Okay. No? So yes. So. If you do it yourself, you need to invest money for uh, this kind of situation. I mean, the money is going to be maybe huge, the investment that you are going to make. But uh, if you have a third party logistics, you are going to have a reduction in cost. I mean, you maybe are going to pay, but not that much as purchasing five trucks or six trucks or anything like that. Risk mitigation, of course. I mean, if, for example, the, the truck, gets damaged and it's not possible to continue, the third party uh, has to come with another truck and, and send the, the product, right? Um, so it's going to be their problem. You just pay for the logistics and that's it. Okay, the other one says limited resources. Let's see, sell me. The limited resources, teacher. Uh, uh, it's going to be, let me see. Yes, that's the one. Limited resources, customer-centric industry. Their party logistic, the benefit is focus on core competency. Okay. Competency. Competency. What do you understand competency. about? If the characteristic of the business is in the company has limited resources for resolve the, the problem of the logistic. The, when the company contract, contract, hire. Contract, contract, hire, 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 third party logistic, the benefits is in the is more, more focus because um, they, uh, the, the, the third parties give the support for the limited resources. Perfect, that is it, very good. Mm -hmm. So yes, maybe you need five trucks for you to move the products and you just have one truck, so you don't have all the resources. And uh, if you get uh, a third party logistics, uh, not only they're going to handle with their resources, but also instead of thinking, oh, we need to check the truck, we need to check the, the roads, uh, anything like that, you are going to focus on the on the product that you are producing. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Very good, perfect, good. The next one is going to be for floor. Global network of firm supplier and customer access to international logistic network. What do you understand on this one? I think about the more uh, 
more extension uh, the country the other country yeah if you uh, if you get an international logistics network of course you will be able to to supply your product in better way to other countries because they know what to do, right? Good, perfect. The next one, uh, business, uh, is going to be for Mayra. Hello, Mayra, are you here? Okay, not here. Uh, Guadalupe, can you please help me with this one? Not here, it's with my outside. Sandra. What? Um, business? Yeah, that's the one. Business requirements for exploring new and outnot markets. Tier party logistics support for market space. What do you perfect? What do you understand on this one? Uh, is is important? Uh, no, no new markets. Uh, okay. For expansion, for expansion. The, mer mer the market. Okay, very good. Yes, actually, if you do it yourself, then you need to explore new and unknown markets. And maybe you don't have the experience, you don't know the culture, you know the way or the laws in other countries. But if you have a third party logistics, they support for market expansion, they know what to do. So it's going to be much easier, definitely. The last one, Pamela. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. The last one. Yes, please. Uh, competition in P and 3PL industry advance, advancement in technology. Third party logistic. Simplify outsourcing process. What do you understand on this? Hmm. Um, maybe it can be about. Um, um, I don't know if it's outsourcing, it's about uh, um, I can explain it right. Oh, don't worry, little. I will mm -hmm. help you. Don't worry. So, if you do it yourself, you are going to compete with other industry or with other companies that ha they have 3PL industry and they know what to do. And also, you need to invest in technology systems and things like that. But if you get a third party logistics, you will have a simplified outsourcing process. You just explain mm -hmm. to the other party, I need this. And they do. And minimum cost. Definitely. That is one of the most important things here. Good. I have our last one here. So these are like uh, the greatest challenge for 3PLs face. So this is something that uh, people and companies have get, get to, to check what will be the challenges that they have. So the, the largest one is the capacity. So they sometimes they want to, to manage too many, too many markets or too many products. So sometimes that might be a disadvantage, but if they have very good systems, I believe it won't be any problem. Technology investment, definitely. I mean, systems are very, very expensive nowadays. And to pay for a software, uh, for example, I used to work for a bank and they uh, they purchase an, an antivirus and hackers and things system for the servers, you know, the servers that are for the bank. And my uh, co-worker, he went to Egypt to purchase that system and that cost around $2 million. I mean, 
that was very, very expensive. So technology investment is something that is very important in this one. The next one is finding, training, retaining qualified labor. Yeah, to train people and to retain people that know how to do things also is a big expense for companies that they do not have 3PLs. Regulations is another one because laws, procedures, you need to do everything according to what the government needs to be done, right? For example, for re the restaurants, um, the quality about health should be, is very, very high. The standards are very high. The next one is rising operational costs. So of course, if you do it yourself, the expenses are going to be very high. Finding and retaining customers, also very important. So if you have your own 3PL outsourcing retailer, then you are going to, as we say on the other one, we're going to focus on, on the product so our customers are satisfied. Meeting customer service requirement, of course, you can check into that one by um, having an agreement, a nice agreement with the retailer. Making a profit, definitely. That is one of the most important things in companies. Uh, contingency planning, risk management, global coverage, incorporate social responsibility are the last ones. So capacity, of course, this is going to be the highest because it's going to be, if you don't have a retailer, if you don't have a 3PL, probably the capacity that you're going to have is minimal according or comparing to the one that you might have with 3PL. Perfect. So do you have any questions about the class of today? <clears throat> no teacher. Clear, clear as our chat. No, so uh, let's see if that is true. Floor. What is a 3PL? Packaging, transportation, and Packaging, transportation, and I don't remember the last. Okay, very good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. That is a 3PL, right? So the 3PL is the one that has three stages of outsourcing. That is it. Good, perfect. Uh, anybody can help me with 4PL? What is the difference with 4PL and 3PL? Yeah, for me, for me, the difference is uh, 3PL versus 4PL, 4PL is logistic, isn't it? Mm, and courier, yeah. Very good, that is it. So in the 4PL, you are going to include also the logistic system, the whole thing, right? Not only the carrier and the packaging and the delivery. Very good, perfect, Osmin. Tiene un punto en el examen final, solo que no hago examen. So, the other one, what is 5PL, who can tell me what is the difference between the other ones and 5PL? Production. Different is production. Very good. Yes. So include. The more integrate. The more integrate is the chain, the value is complete. Yes. Very good. So yeah, the production of the goods or services are included and uh, it's going to be, of course, a larger process, it's more complex, uh, but it's going to be included the whole thing. So it's going to be more profit for you and less problems. You can focus on the product itself and the competitors and uh, many other things. Very good. I'm very happy that at the end, we were able to check into that one. Any questions before we finish? No question. No. For me. Very good. So, my friends, this is the end of this class. Tomorrow is Friday. So, very good. Uh, and Saturday and Sunday is no class. We are going to rest until Monday. So, tomorrow, no class, teacher. Tomorrow, tomorrow no class. Teacher. Yeah, tomorrow we have class. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have class. Only two hours, you know. So, of course, we are going to check the attendance. And uh, in case you leave, uh, it was a pleasure to be with you and uh, I'm very happy that we are moving on. So let's see. 
Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Ah, good. That is double. That's nice. <laughs> Ana Selmi Chévez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Okay, for you is the 101 today, Mayra. Okay, teacher. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present, teacher. Good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good night. Good night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present, teacher. Good night. Good night. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present, teacher. Good night. Good night. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good night. Good night. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Present. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you tonight. And uh, I hope I can see you tomorrow. Rest very well. I know that it's been tired, but to tomorrow is Friday. And uh, dream in English. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, hello, how are you, Mayra? Very good, teacher. Very nice, perfect. So, of course, you have experience on this one once. So, the first question is, how do you feel that you are in this model? I mean, do you feel that you are learning, that you are getting to know more things? Yes, I am learning in this model. Um, I'm learning vocabulary. Um, First, because the last model is based in marketing. And this model I view that is based in logistic is different. I know uh, more vocabulary. Okay, very good. I'm very happy. So the next question is, do you have any questions about anything on this module or in the previous models? Um, about the models, no, but I always uh, have a question. For example, um, if you can give me a tip for uh, how I increase my vocabulary in English. Very good. Yes, there are many ways for you to increase the vocabulary. Maybe one of the most common is for you to read. Uh, when you are going to read, uh, you can read something that is funny with you. I mean, something that you enjoy. Uh, if you like novels or if you not, uh, like about business or if you like about self, um, knowing yourself, uh, things like that. So reading is always a very good way for you to get vocabulary. You can read short stories. You can read mysteries. Maybe the one recommendation is not to read books that are kind of old. For example, if you read Shakespeare, there will be many words that are that we don't use anymore in English anymore. So 
that might be, uh, I mean, it's good for you to know those, those words, but it's better if you read something that is like more, um, in these days, in the 90s, the 2000, 2010, something like that. Um, so it's going to be a good way. And my advice for you is that whenever you are reading, if you get mm -hmm. a new word, don't go to the translator, go to a dictionary. So you understand okay. the word because sometimes the word has many meanings, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, then in that way, you are going to understand that this word has different meanings depending on the context and depending on what is next to the word. So that will be the best way for you to get vocabulary. Okay. And who page can I use for uh, looking for a... Uh, um... Uh, a translation? No, no, it's translation. Is um, el, el significado? La, the meaning. The meaning of the word. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, there are dictionaries online that you can use. So if you go, for example, for Webster, Webster is a good dictionary, Cambridge. And that also is a very good dictionary because they have, you know, it's very interesting because when you use those online dictionaries and also I guess that you can install the application into cell phones or tablets, uh, but it's going to show you the meaning of the words. It's going to show you also uh, examples in a sentence. It's going to mm -hmm. show you synonyms, antonyms, and things like that. So it's, it's very complete. So you understand very good that the word. Okay. Very okay, good. Perfect. And uh, I wanted to ask you, in mm -hmm. all the skills of English, what do you believe that is the one that you need to develop more? For example, do you need more uh, to listen or to, or to speak or to write or to read, reading comprehension? What is the one that you, you need to improve? I need to speak more. Okay, very good. Yeah, I believe that that is something that we, everybody needs to, to speak more. Well, I don't like to speak more because I speak English all day long. I don't like it. But anyways, um, the, um, the next question is, do you practice with somebody else's or just here in the class? No, I don't practice. Um, my husband uh, always told me that I can practice with him, but I... I don't do it. You don't like it or anything like that? Um, I feel that I don't, um, I don't have it. You don't have the habit. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And he has like the same level that you, you have? No, he, he is upper. Okay, very good. So that is a very good thing. Maybe what you can do is to practice um, at certain times or certain days. You can say, okay, for example, on Fridays and Saturdays, we're going to speak only in English. So you can start little by little. Maybe to change only to English is not, is not that good. Or you can have conversations, you know, hey, let's speak in English 30 minutes about any topic. And it's going to be a good thing because probably you will know more vocabulary from him Okay, he can explain you better. And another thing that is going to happen is that maybe you are going to get to know things from him that you don't know. So that is interesting as well. Um, that is a very good thing because you have somebody to speak with. So for example, uh, if you have somebody, you take advantage of that one and you will see. You will see that if you do that one and it little by little you speak more and more English, there will come a time that you are going to speak very fluent. Very nice. Okay. Okay. That is a very good idea. Also, you can practice online. I mean, there are many ways that you can practice. For example, if you want to practice the pronunciation, there are some applications where you can do dictations and it's going to write or correct you. For example, in something very simple is that in, in Google and the documents, when mm -hmm. you open from the from the email there is a feature that you can activate that is to dictate. So if you activate that feature and you, for example, read a paragraph slowly, that 
the software is going to take the words. And if one word is not correct, it's because the pronunciation was not correct. You keep, wow. Yeah, there are many things that you can do. And, but you have a very good level, you know. I've been, I've been checking on everybody. I know that everybody is different. Your level mm -hmm. is very good. It's very good. You have good pronunciation. And if you continue, you are going to be full English, definitely. Thank you, teacher. Very good. I'm very happy that we're moving on. So do you have any other question, any other thing that I can do for you? No, teacher. Everything is okay. Perfect, Mayra. So it was a pleasure to be with you. I hope you have a wonderful night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye now. Bye.